to get the hair looking like this, I'll create a stamp visible layer by pressing on Ctrl Shift Alternate E. And if you want to learn how to retouch your images with focus separation and how we got here, I'll believe the link to that video in the description below. Now, after I create a stamp visible layer, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to make this bead straight. And to do that, I'm just going to copy the bead below and replace the one above. So I'm not going to pick my lasso tool right here. You can use the pen tool, you can use any selection tool, but I'm going to use the lasso tool and just make a selection of this bead like this. Okay. Selection doesn't have to be perfect. So just make a selection of the bead like this. Okay. Now after that, I'm going to press on Ctrl J. And if I just move it up, you can see the bead right here. All right. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to make it fit with the one below. All right. Now to do that, I'm going to press on Ctrl T to bring my transform tool and just place it where I want it. I think I like it like this. Then I'm going to right click and just click on this warp tool right here. And I'm just going to warp it until I feel it's looking really, really good. All right. All right. I think like this works. I'm going to click on OK. And after that, I'm just going to hide it. Once I hide it, now next I'm going to do, I'm going to remove this bead right here on the top. All right, and to remove it, I'm not going to come back to my layer right here. So let me just rename this layer subject. So I'm going to come to my subject layer and just pick my remove tool. This move tool is only available in the latest version of Photoshop, but you can use your close thumb tool and you can use your patch tool. But I prefer to use this remove tool because it's more accurate and it saves a lot of time. So with my remove tool selected, I'm just going to paint on the bead which I want to remove like this. And it's just going to remove it. So after I remove it, you can see how perfect it's looking. I'm just going to turn off, I'm just going to turn on this one right here that we replace. So you can see it's looking really, really, really good. But I feel there's a lot of dent right here, which I need to fix. So I'll come back to the bead. Let me just rename this layer bead and just add a layer mask. And after that, I'm not going to pick my normal brush tool. With my black brush selected, I'm just going to remove these parts right here. All right, so I'm going to remove the edges just a little bit like this to make it look even more natural. Okay. All right. So I feel it's looking good like this. If you feel it's not looking good, all you can do is come back again to your bead, click on Ctrl T and just click on and just right click, click on warp tool and just warp it to anyhow you want. But I feel this works for me like this. So I'm going to leave it like this and click on OK. Now I'm going to merge this bead and this subject layer together. Click on right click and just merge them like that and rename it subject again. All right, so this is the before and this is the after. So that's how I fixed the bead for this image. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. Now after that, it's time to work on the hair. Now to work on this hair, all you need is micro jambon, close thumb tool, spotting brush tool, liquify and a lot of patience. So that's all you need. All right, and the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to fill this part of the hair that's looking scanty. I'm just going to fill them and I'm going to create a new empty layer. And this is why I create a new empty layer so that I can actually reduce the opacity, increase the opacity, erase if I feel I make any mistake. I'll pick my close thumb tool right here. And for my sample, I'm going to change this to all layers because I'm working on an empty layers. Once all layers are selected, opacity, make sure opacity is set to 100, flow set to 100. So I'm going to increase my brush size and just sample for where I want to replace. So I'm going to sample from this place right here. Press alternate to sample and just paint on the place which I want to feel just like that. All right. I'll do the same thing for this part right here. I'm just going to feel this part. I'll do the same thing for this part right here. I'll do the same thing for this part right here. I'm just going to feel them like that. I'm going to feel this part right here just a little bit to make it look natural. All right, so I feel it's looking good like this. All right, so the before and the after. The before and the after. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to merge the layer to my subject layer. And the reason why I'm merging the layer, I don't want the, I don't want to stack a lot of layer. So after that, I'm going to create another empty layer again and just remove the stray hair. So with my close time tool selected, I'm not going to sample from the close by area and just remove those stray hair. And I'm not going to remove everything because I want the image to look as natural as possible. All right. Now, the first one I did, I feel the hair was looking too retouched. When I encouraged the um, review, 
he said the hair was looking too a touch and too perfect so for this tutorial i'm just going to try as much as possible to make the hair look as natural as possible all right i'm going to remove this part right here i'm also going to remove some of this part right here because i feel it's looking too much i'm going to remove some of those parts okay so like this works and i'm going to relieve this part i'm going to use liquify to fix this part right here all right now next i'm going to do i'm going to pick my mixer brush too and to mixer brush too i'm going to mix this color right here because you can see the color right there has changed so the before and after you can see those colors right there have changed so my mixer brush selected mixer sample layer is selected i'm just going to mix I'm just going to mix this part right here just to make the color look more even like that all right so i feel that's all i'm going to do so this is the before and this is the after and now i'm just going to merge it again because i don't want to stack layers so after i merge it now i'm just going to create micro dodge and bond so i'll come to my actions and click on micro dodge and bond right here or i come to my touching academy and click on dodge and bone curves all right so you can use any dodge and bone action you have i'm going to delete this visual aid now for the dodge and bone what i'm going to do i'm going to make the bright parts of the hair more darker and the dark part of the hair more brighter just to even out the luminosity of that particular place and make everything straight all right now once i run my dodge and bone action i'm going to come to my dodge i'm going to pick my normal brush tool make sure my foreground color is set to white because the mask is on black and make sure my opacity is set to 100 my flow is set to 2 or 1% but I have to use 2% now I'm just going to burn those parts that are looking too bright and dodge those parts that are looking too dark so I'm going to come to my burn and I'm just going to burn this part right here because I feel they are looking too dark so like I said you just have to be patient when doing it so I'm just going to be burning those parts that are looking too bright and dodging those parts that are looking too dark like that just to make everything look uniform and look even so just take your time and actually do this so what i'm going to do now i'm just going to do micro dodge and bone for the hair before actually going to liquefy and just do a little bit of liquefy for this hair okay now let's see the before and after so this is the before and this is the after the before and the after now next thing i'm going to do i'm going to create a stamp visible layer and use liquify to shape in the hair so i'm going to press on ctrl shift alternate e then i'll come to my filter i'll come to my liquify now once i'm on my liquify i'll just pick my forward wrap tool and make sure my pressure is on 10 you can use any pressure you want but 10 works for me so i leave my pressure on 10 and just increase my brush size and just move this part inside a little bit I'll move this part inside a little bit. I'll move this part up a little bit. I'll move this part inside. And this part right here, I'm going to move it inside a little bit. Like this. And I'll move this part outside a little bit like this. So I'm adding shape to the hair right now. That's what I'm trying to do with liquify. Okay, I'm going to take this part outside. And I'm going to take this part inside a little bit. You can zoom in if you want. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Okay. So I'm going to move this part outside a little bit like this. Okay. And I'll move this part inside a little bit. And I'll move this part. And I'll move this part outside. And I move this part right here outside a little bit like this. Okay, so let me just zoom out a little bit. Let's see. I think I'm going to move this part outside a little bit as well. Okay, now I like it like this. Now, next, I'm going to do I'm going to pick on this my blush tool right here. Now, for this my blush tool, I'm just going to increase the brush size and just click on this place right here because i want this part to be full so i'm going to increase my brush size and just click on this part right here to just make the hair more full as you can see so 
it works on me all right it works on me like this so let me just quickly show you the before and after what did in, in liquify so this is the before and this is the after the before the before and the after so just take your time to actually refine it so basically this is all i did inside of liquify i just shaping the hair and just use that blur tool to make this place more fuller and just click on ok now next i'm going to do i'm going to use my spot healing brush tool to remove some stray hair or some flyaway hair i can see on the image so i'm just going to create a new empty layer then click on my spot healing brush tool make sure sample or layer is selected because i'm working on an empty layer so i'm going to zoom in a little bit and just reduce my brush size and just paint over some stray hair i'm seeing on the image like that and right now it's as if we are doing nothing but you are going to see the massive difference of this simple thing we just do just by using the spot healing brush tool to remove some straight hair that are looking too obvious it's just going to change everything about your hair so like i said you have to be patient and just actually take your time to do it it's actually easy the only hard part is that nobody wants to sit down and do the work but it's actually easy now let me just quickly show you the before and after of what we just did so you can see the effect so this is the before and this is the after the before and the after you can see the effect like that just just a subtle difference can actually go long way so i'm just going to take my time to use my spot healing brush tool to fix the image okay now let's see the before and after what we just did for the spot healing brush tool so this is the before and the after the before and the after you can see the magical difference and you can actually do another dodge and burn just take your time to dodge and burn the image so the more you do it the more perfect it is if you want it to be perfect just take your time to actually do it now the last thing i'm going to do i'm going to fill this part right here and to do that i'm just going to create another empty layer just pick my close thumb tool just sample from a close by area like this and just paint over this place like so okay okay and i'm going to remove this place right here so i'm going to create a stamp visible layer by pressing a ctrl shift alternate e just pick my close stamp tool just sample from a close by area and just paint over that hair right there to remove it like that so you can actually use focus separation to remove those parts i actually use focus separation but basically this is how you do it so let's look at the hair so let me just group everything i did for the hair so you can see the before and after and just let me rename it hair so this is the before and this is the after the before and the after so basically this is how you can retouch your hair in photoshop click on the video screen right here if you want to watch how to use focus separation to retouch your image i'll see you guys in my next video stay creative